I've received quite a few comments and uh, requests to do a video on the Ford Inverse Kinematics and how I calculated them out for my six-axis stepper motor robot. Um, so I thought I'd take a crack at it. Um, I am not an expert on this, so uh, by all means, if you see any mistakes that I make, um, please point them out. Uh, but I'll do my best to explain it as I understand it and as I've applied it to this robot. Um, so if you've ever tried to figure out how to calculate the kinematics or done a Google search on it, you know, you usually end up looking at something like this where you've got a, you know, a model with a whole bunch of angles and a Z, ZI1 and, you know, just a number of different variables, you know, and you start reading it and it'll say the distance from ZI1 to Z1 measured along the XI1 and it gets fairly confusing and then you know, without much explanation, you usually find yourself looking at something like this, where you have, you know, I dash one T equals R X times, you know, and it just goes and you're just looking at all these uh, transformation matrices, and you know, you just kind of end up more confused than when you started. So I thought I'd try and explain it um, from a layman's point of view um, that most people could understand. So. Um, First of all, I've got a, uh, a little robot simulator here, Roki Sim. It's a, it's a free simulator. So the first question is, well, what is forward and inverse kinematics? Well, they're the calculations that we use to either figure out where the robot's tool center point, which is right here on the very tip of the flange here, to figure out where this is in the X, Y, and Z position of the world. So, um, you know, that's the easier calculation to do and it's it's not as useful as the other um, as the other uh, formula that we have to do here for the inverse kinematics so the inverse kinematics is if we know a point in space um, we know the X Y and Z that we want to get to the inverse kinematics is going to calculate what the joint angles need to be to get there so going back to the forward kinematics if I was to jog this robot forward you know, joint by joint, you can see down here it's calculating what the XYZ uh, positions are for tool center point. So that's the forward kinematic uh, calculation. When I move a joint, it calculates where the tip is in space. Now, the reverse of that is let's say that the robot's in this position and I want to pick up a part and I want to jog the robot straight down. You know, to do that, to go straight up, and straight down that's a lot more difficult because what I have to do is tell the robot I want to go from here to here and there's a specific distance here and then you know from that position that I want to get to I have to figure out what all these joint angles need to be so you can see here as I jog the robot up and down if you watch these uh, joints up here you can see how all the joints you know have to move to different positions to maintain you know that straight line so that's that is the inverse uh, calculation right there. So going back to the um, project page here, um, on this project page for the AR2 stepper motor robot we can download all of the files, you can get the instructions to build the robot, um, the electrical schematics, the print files to print it, uh, everything's here but I've also got um, one file in particular that we need to look at for this example and that's the kinematic model it's an excel spreadsheet um, so you can download that here on github under my page chris s annan um, forward slash ar2 and you can get this kinematic model so what i've done here is i've got an excel spreadsheet and i have completely worked out all of the forward and inverse kinematics for this robot um, on a spreadsheet so you can kind of see a live example and see what's going on so you're probably looking at it right now going wow that looks busy um, but I'll try and go through it slowly um, use a few examples so on the left side of the page here with the blue header we have the calculation for the forward kinematics that's where we put in the joint angles and we get out in the green box here the XYZ yaw pitch and roll so over here in the yellow box I can put in my joint angles, over here is my output, that's going to tell me 
what the XYZ uh, pitch and roll is. Now, if you were to open up the control software for the for the stepper motor robot, um, and you were to put in these values, it's going to match exactly because um, all these calculations were transposed into the robot program exactly. Um, so. That being said, on this page, the forward kinematics, um, you know, if I'm to jog a joint here, the forward kinematics is going to calculate the output, what the X, Y, Z, uh, pitch, and roll are over here. So the forward kinematics is what populates these fields up here that I'm pointing to. Now, the inverse kinematics is when I press these buttons to jog in X, Y, Z, uh, pitch, and roll, the inverse kinematics are what is going to tell the robot what the joint angles need to be to achieve that. So if I want to go, you know, 10 millimeters up in the X, it's going to figure out what all the joint angles are going to be, and it's going to go there. So that's the inverse kinematics. Um, so on this spreadsheet here, on this side of the right side, um, in the pink uh, header, is the inverse kinematics. So on this side, what we do is we put in excuse me it's going to use um, it's going to use its current position where the robots currently at and then if I put in a change in XYZ uh, pitch or roll then it is going to show me what the joint angle changes to to make that happen so over here for example you know if I change that from minus 90 to minus 100 we can see what the uh, XYZ yaw pitch and roll have changed to. Um, and then over here on the inverse side, let's say I want the robot to move down 10 millimeters and I enter that. Over here we're going to see what the joint angles need to be to make that happen. And then to test that we can press this test button and what that does is runs a little macro, comes over here and it records what the previous XYZ yaw pitch and roll is and then shows me what the new XYZ yaw pitch and roll is so you can see here that I went from 508 down to 498 so I've gone down uh, 10 millimeters so that kind of shows me that the calculation has worked so before we get into um, all of this over here and start looking at all these boxes and values and what they all mean I wanted to go through uh, a couple of real basic examples um, so these might be kind of stupid but um, bear with me here so I'm going to use a, a more simple example than a robot we'll get to a, a robot example when we talk about frames in a minute but I thought I would talk about a more simple example with frames with the uh, illustration of a video game. So when you're playing a video game and you use your controller um, to move your character, um, your character always stays in the middle of the screen and it's actually it's actually the world that's moving. So if you're to move your controller you know uh, a certain distance left or right, you know the the console has to figure out how to you know calculate uh, what that position is and then how to move the graphic to that position to make it show you on the screen you know what you've done with the remote so for example you know if I move my character you know if I move my character to the left then my world moves to the right and and vice versa so the illustration I want to make here is that over here we've got um, an illustration of a frame. It's just kind of a little wire model here that's supposed to imagine a, a corner of a box here where you've got the Z direction, the Y direction, and the X direction. And picture this frame right here being attached to your screen, a fixed position. This is your zero reference. This never moves. It stays fixed to your screen. And then imagine that your world that you're in, that its frame its origin is defined maybe where this building is so it's got a frame attached to it with a Z X and a Y axis and then your character you know he's got a frame with a Z Y and an X axis and so what the game has to do is establish a relationship 
between frames so that when you move one of them there's basically a mathematical calculation that's done to you know to make that that change happen or the rotation change happen and you know uh, by the same token with your character um, if you were to uh, you know if you were to you know rotate your character although he stays in the middle of the screen if he rotates then there's a relationship a rotational relationship between these frames um, that we have to calculate for and that relationship between the frames is uh, for the rotation is um, is characterized by, by what we call a rotation matrix so this wireframe here and this wireframe here and this frame those are just visual um, representations of the frame um, but the actual frame itself is really a um, what we call a uh, for the rotation part of it we'll get to the the movement in space in a minute but the rotation part of it is what we call a, a rotation frame so to give kind of a idea of that I'm gonna scroll down here to some blank space so a rotation matrix is basically three rows by three columns and it contains a bunch of values and all of those values um, somehow those values define the yaw pitch and roll the rotation of of that frame so the next question is okay great so I've got this you know this three by three box with some numbers in it how do I establish or put a, a rotation into it so right here I've got this um, picture that's in the spreadsheet that one out of the way so in order to put the numbers into this box that represent rotation I have to use these calculations right here so if I take the rotation in X so for example my example here if I take the rotation in X you know this rotation here between there and, and what would be zero the difference between this one and this one so I take that rotation of the x-axis and I apply this formula to it I put a 1 in this box a 0 in this box a 0 in this box and so on like we see there and then for these four boxes I take the cosine which is a you know the uh, you know the mathematical formula for cosine and I multiply my x value by cosine and put it in that box and then I take the negative sign of my rotation and put it in that box and then I take the positive sign and then the cosine again in that box and now this 3 by 3 rotation matrix is going to define the x rotation of of that frame so that's only the X rotation. So now we've got to look at the Y rotation. I've got to do the same thing again, is create another 3x3 three three frame. And then I do this math. I take the cosine of Y, and I put in a 0, a 1, a 0, 0, and 0. And then for all the other boxes there, I take the sine of Y and put it there. And I put the cosine of Y and the negative sine and put it there. So now I have a 3 by 3 rotation matrix that defines the rotation of X on that frame. Now the third thing we do is we do the same thing again but with the Z rotation. So we take the uh, so we take the Z rotation of that frame and we put uh, you know, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0 and then the cosine of the z angle, the negative sine of the z angle, the sine and the cosine of that angle and put it into this matrix. So now I've got a, a matrix that represents the x rotation, a matrix that represents the y rotation, and a matrix that represents the z rotation. So that's great. I've got three matrices that show rotation, but what I really need is one overall rotation matrix that shows or illustrates the um, 
you know the entire rotation of, of everything the XYZ yaw pitch and roll 